Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with Pure Zoo, post the March 31st, 2017 formatted list. Now, this list has only touched Rat Pierre, and so within like 10 minutes of the list going up and me making my video on it, I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure Zoo still isn't dead, and I decided to just like start experimenting with the deck, and so I have put a bunch of combo videos up over the course of today uh, that have shown like a bunch of the fusion substitute combos, but that's not even in this deck because these videos were filmed before I even took the time to start thinking about the intricacies of how like one rat can still end with a Dryden, a search, and a draw, a fusion substitute, um, and like how the Terra Top can end with a plus three play uh, and stuff like that. And this was this was something that I didn't even include in the deck. This was something that I filmed earlier in the day, and I just basically just went in with the pure essence of theory of this deck is still good if you are able to special summon rat because you can special summon rat in any way make broad bull search a level four to normal summon and then normal summon that level four make emerald and then if that lower if that level four that you normal summoned was something like whiptail then you are still going to be able to put tiger mortar over your broad bull attach a card and put whiptail under it and then make dryden with a whiptail under it so you'll still end with emerald drawing a card and dryden with a whiptail under it even if you're not able to keep whiptail in hand off of your search like you would have in previous times when we had three rat stuff like that but as you can see, like, the zoo board still is able to, like, generate, like, things. Like, even without Fusion Substitute being a factor, um, it just becomes a little bit more tricksy in terms of, like, what you need. You need to be able to either Special Summon Rat or have a way to Special Summon a level 4 alongside the Rat um, in order for you to just make your boards. But, I mean, it's still very much possible. It's obviously much more valuable for you to be using things like your Dridents um, and your, uh, your Terra Tops and your Barrages in order to get you into your Dryden plays and stuff like that because it's obviously going to allow you to preserve your normal summon which allows you to go you know do stuff there but so he twin twisters my two sets and it's solemn strike and dimensional barrier uh, leaving the, my body as a shield down and uh, I just call fusion because he discarded a fluffle card uh, if he had discarded anything that didn't indicate what his deck was at all like if he had discarded something like a dark hole or something I probably would have just not activated the dimensional barrier because of the fact that I would only have good merit to call Xyz, and if I called Xyz, then my Dryden is turned off, and so that would have been terrible. But so, I was in a really good position last turn anyway, because I was able to normal summon Thurblade, rotate a card out, and he didn't even know that I had Whiptail in hand, because I had one in my hand pre-existing, and I went out of my way to search Whiptail first, then normal summon Thurblade, and discard Whiptail to draw one, so as far as he saw, I drew a Whiptail, discarded a Whiptail. Uh, now, at this point, I'm really just, like I said, I didn't put a lot of thought process into this when I started doing it. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to herd her -er with some Zodiac plays knowing that I can still make Dryden plus Emerald and see what I can do as far as uh, as far as far gameplay footage. Um, like, for, just because people are just absolutely just going out of their way to say this deck is not playable and that it's absolutely dead. And that's actually just not the case. It's actually just a really strong, like, rank 4 toolbox. It's still a really strong toolbox. Uh, for like any deck that wants to support it as a hybrid or the pure deck. Now, whether or not the pure deck is even like still like viable in an essence of the format, that's yet to be seen, um, and that will hopefully be seen come YCS at Denver. But basically, this deck still completely can function as hybrids, uh, being hybrided with other engines, specifically things like pendulum decks that don't rely on the normal summon and stuff like that, because you can still do the fusion substitute combos to get extra cards. Uh, you can do all that sort of nonsense. But as you can see, I messed up here. Uh, as far as uh, as far as what I was supposed to do, I was supposed to detach Broad Bull off my last Dryden, um, so that I could shuffle it back with Emerald. I was supposed to like target my Tinky, um, and that way I could have put it back into my extra deck and summoned it again and gotten a third Whiptail because then I could have I could have uh, summoned the Broad Bull again because I made the first Broad Bull this turn um, off of just generically rank fouring with it with two level fours uh, so that it would be bigger. Um, and then like I'm literally 700 off game, and if I was able to make another Broad Bull then I would have been able to uh, have a game. Now, Broad Bull is actually the only card that I've been testing that actually comes up in multiples more than any other one of the Zodiacs now because of the fact that you have to get your, like, summons, you have to get your, like, level force and normal summon and stuff like that. So Broad Bull might just be, like, a three of in the extra deck if the deck exists in a pure form. But, uh, so as you can see, uh, I've just, uh, I've got a <laughs> Borbo chilling in defense mode, but I've got a Dryden on the field that's 5,700, and I use it to pierce over his monster uh, and all that sort of stuff. So it's just... Uh, I'm just, I've got a big Dryden and I'm able to do things with it, uh, but I could have had two Drydents um, if I'd played my turn structure correctly. I could have killed him last turn if I played my turn structure correctly. A lot of different things, uh, like, come up as far as what I haven't really thought about as far as the intricacies of this deck. Literally, all I'm trying to do is prove a point that, look, you can still do these Zodiac boards. That's literally all I'm trying to do. Uh, but I do have a My Body as a, uh, as a shield face down, so I feel 
like I'm safe against anything like, you know, uh, Fright for Tiger coming in to try and blow up my board and doing all that sort of nonsense. But he's doing the fluffle nonsense, uh, getting himself, uh, like, his extra cards, doing his cheap bounce to get back his edge imp chain. Uh, and basically just, I, I don't really have a lot that I've got going for me on my opponent's turn now because of the fact that he twin twisted the strike away, um, and the barrier, but the barrier stunned him for a turn, so I guess that was fine. Uh, but so he's going into his Fright for Kraken, and I've got my huge Dryadent on the board, and so when he does his chain links for uh, Penguin and all that, I don't want him sending my Dryadent to Grave. Not at all, so I detach one of the materials. <laughs> As you saw, the materials are two Thoroughblades and two Whiptails. Uh, it's definitely... Definitely a, uh, a large number of things stacked under this Dryden. Uh, but so, from here he actually just like takes advantage of something that doesn't exist in the American TCG. Uh, in the European TCG, <clears throat> this exists. And it's called designate or it exists in America. It's called Designated Activation. And that is, under the TCG North American rule set, that Fright for Tiger that he just summoned has to be Chain Link 2, and the cat that went to grave has to be chain link one because it met its trigger first and so in that instance I would be able to my body as a shield the tiger because the my body as a shield would be responding directly to the fright for tiger but because dev pro and Yu-Gi-Oh pro of those like varieties are coded under OCG rulings and TCG Europe rulings follow the OCG rulings as far as designated activation goes uh, then he was able to structure his chain links because they're both attempting to trigger at the same time but in North America, the cat has to trigger first because it was sent to Graveyard before anything else. Uh, but So he clears my board uh, using that little uh, loophole that he's able to do where he gets to not care about my body as a shield because of the fact that I can't chain my body as a shield to Fluffle Cat because Fluffle Cat isn't attempting to destroy anything. It's trying to add back polymerization. Uh, but So he makes his uh, Fright for Sabretooth and brings back the Kraken, attacks twice with the Kraken, attacks with Sabretooth, puts me at low life, uh, but it's still something that I'm easily able to, like, play out of, uh, per se. I'm still able to, like, ride Geki, uh, potentially. But his, uh, his Saber Tiger actually can't be destroyed by Battle or Card Effects. He used three materials for it. So I just get, like, really lucky with a top deck distribution. Uh, but even the, uh, even the Terra Top, I believe, was a play. Because I believe I put back the Takatom board. So I could have just drawn any level four in my deck, I think, at this point in time. And it would have made Utopia the Lightning. Because I could have specialed my Terra Top, got Takatom board, made Invoker and then summoned Rat from deck, or just summoned any zoo from deck, and then normal summoned whatever level 4 I had, and made Utopia the Lightning, so I believe that was still an option. I may just be wrong, uh, but like, still, I'm just able to just attack over with Utopia the Lightning. Um, so I didn't play that game the best in terms of like the resources that I had access to, but I'm just literally trying to focus on just making generic turn 1 zoo boards, not really, like I said, I didn't really put too much thought process into the deck before I filmed this video and subsequent dual videos that might also be going up in this, in this same day. Uh, like, I just didn't really put a lot of thought into it, because I was just like, I can still make a standard turn one board, and I had put zero thought into any of the uh, into any of the fusion substitute combos at the point that, uh, that this went on. But like, for instance, like here, this is going to be a really weird and wonky combo that you see, but it could have just been a fusion substitute combo, and that would have been uh, fine. But, like, uh, there's just a couple of different things that could have uh, happened. Like, I could have made a fusion substitute combo, um, with like normal summoning rat or just uh, not even instant fusioning at the point that I instant fusioned. I could have normal summon third blade, rotate it out for the for the rat out of my hand, make tiger mortar, detach, put rat back under it, and then do the fusion substitute play that ends you with a new a newly summoned broad bull and a search, and then you could instant fusion and uh, get your uh, emerald. So it would allow you to draw two off of instant fusion, allowing you to summon emerald. You would have drawn one by putting back Norden off of fusion substitute, and then you would have searched one off Broad Bull, so you would have you know, gotten three new cards to your name, and you would have ended with Dryden and Emerald. So it would have been a two-card investment for a plus three. Um, like These are just things that I didn't really put into effect and into thought processes before I uh, before I like filmed these videos, because like I said, I put so little thought into Oh my god, look, this deck is still playable, because all you have to do is special summon rat, and then you can make a rank 4 by normal summoning your whip tail that you search off broad bull, or if you have another zoo card in hand, you could search their blade, normal summon it, discard it, get a draw, dig yourself further into your deck, and if you put viper under anything, then you're going to be able to uh, just keep going uh, by putting tiger mortar. Um, to, uh, on top of your uh, zoo stack to put the whip tail back under it. Like, I was just so excited to be like, oh look, you can still play this deck! <laughs> uh, but my opponent ghost dashes my, uh, my emerald there, which I actually don't think is correct. I believe, like, he should have ghost dashed me earlier, but I guess, in theory, I played around it quite a lot. Um, 
uh, I played around the Ghost Ash quite a bit with like how I structured my rat play, I guess. Uh, so I guess there is that to consider, but uh, I told him we were playing new format, and he took that as we're playing with maximum crisis cards, and so he has Ghost Ash in his deck, and I was super surprised when I saw it for this game. I was like, whoa, Ghost Ash isn't a current format card. We don't get that until, like, late April, early May. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, I can't use my Emerald to shovel back? That's the, the biggest dicking I've ever received. Uh, but so I end my board with, uh, with like I said, like, look at this. It's a really random ensemble of, like, stuff. Uh, but I still have gone, like, plus two overall. The Broad Bull is there that can be turned into a Dryden. All that sort of stuff. And I still have back row. Like, I've dug myself into my deck enough to get back row. And it would have been an extra plus one had that Emerald resolved. So I would have actually had eight cards. So, like, it's, it's still something that, like, you can just still just generate advantage and yield, like, resources and stuff for yourself to be able to use and all that. But... He makes a mistake and he foolished a, uh, an edge of chain, and if you caught that, uh, and that thing doesn't trigger unless it's sent from hand or field. Um, so, he even typed in the chat, oh my god, I keep sending that. Uh, but so, he tries to attack into my Dryden with, uh, with an owl after I dimensional barrier calling fusion. I just make whip tail attached to Dryden, and that kills it and banishes it. And so from here, I just have free reign to basically do whatever I want, essentially. I get to resolve my emerald now, uh, doing things like putting back my Norden, putting back exceeds, putting back rat. Uh, so I put back Tiger Mortar, it allows me to draw a card, I draw Stormy Mirror Force, which is pretty decent, although I expect it to fully get like popped off like something like uh, Fright for Tiger before anything even attacks me, so I mean, there is that as an option like that he, my opponent has, so it's not like the be-all end-all of like, oh, you're not touching me now, hee-hee. Um, <clears throat> but at this point, I just start stacking up on uh, on monsters to try and make my, my board bigger, essentially. That's all I'm really trying to do, is to make my board bigger. So I detach off Broad Bull, and I get a search for Thoroughblade here because I do have Zodiac combo in hand, which is a Zodiac card I can discard. So I discard it, get Solemn Strike, and I'm like, all right, there. Now we're good. Now we're in a point where uh, where we can actually have some defense if we're not just outright killing him this turn. But I do some math, uh, realizing that I just summoned a second Rat from my deck that I put back, and Gakuga Samurai is just game with the board that I have because I put the Thoroughblade back under the uh, Tiger Mortar and left it under there, so it has attack points. So like, neat, right? Like, you could still just game people with this deck. The OTKs still exist. Now, granted, they either require instant fusion or, like, a turn of setup, but the OTKs do still definitely exist. I mean, I was literally an OTK... I literally had an OTK last game, but I messed it up because I didn't detach Broad Bull to pop my own Tinky to shuffle it back, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Like, just... It just yields you into OTKs. Like, you're able to set up your board, defend it with the traps that you draw off your resources, and then OTK the next turn very easily, very effectively. It's not even, like, really that hard. Um, to do, but so yeah, like these two games just kind of—I don't know what these games are meant to prove. I guess like my preemptive, like just 10 minutes of thought process into Zodiac Beasts and playing like a maniac still means the deck is better than Fluffles. I guess that's what we can draw from this as a conclusion. Uh, but like, still, like people that say the Zodiac Engine is completely dead are absolutely ignorant in like the thought processes that, that they're using because the deck is still very much like playable. It just probably is going to be more playable as a hybrid supporting engine for other decks, and probably more specifically things like Pendulum decks, or just any deck that doesn't rely on your normal summon, or any deck that's able to make a rank 3 without utilizing your normal summon is very, like, like poised for good use of this stuff, because any way to Invoker yields the Fusion Substitute combo that gives you plus 3 cards, uh, so, like, there's all that sort of stuff that you can consider as well. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I've got another dual video to commentate to put up. I'll probably put up today as well. There will be like a five video day. <laughs> so that's going to be a bit insane. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any questions, comments, or concerns, and all that nonsense. Definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the way to go. As well as it gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway for either a high dollar card or sealed Konami product. Whatever the flavor of the month is for that particular month. This, this month it might be like a box of Duelist Saga. Uh, that might be what it ends up being. But, as well as it also gets you possible access into my personal Discord server to chat with me, play games with me for videos and all that sort of nonsense. That is where Earthworm came from. He came from my Discord server and I've been talking with people on my Discord server about Zoo for the past 24 hours and that is a reward tier on my Patreon if you're interested in doing that. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and I'm a big fan of how they do business. Their pricing and shipping are both very good from what I've had to deal with thus far. So if you're looking to acquire cards that I played in this video, then definitely be sure to check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.